Hey, Miles here, milesbecco.com. In this video, you're going to learn about SEO silos. This is a way for you to structure the content on your website to really rank well for highly competitive keyword phrases. So if you found a keyword phrase that has a high difficulty score, it's a short two word phrase or one word phrase that's really relevant to what you do, but there's already some big sites ranking for it, this is a strategy you can implement to really push yourself up in the rankings. So the first concept you need to understand is the difference between a short tail keyword phrase and a long tail keyword phrase. The easiest way to think about this is the number of words in the phrase. And for this example, I'm going to use container gardening. That is the short tail keyword phrase. It's a very specific phrase. It has a pretty good amount of competition and it's fairly difficult to rank for. On the other hand, a long tail keyword phrase would be a three, four, five, or six word phrase such as how to grow tomatoes in containers. It's going to be easier for you to rank for how to grow tomatoes in containers, but you would get a lot more traffic if you ranked for container gardening. So you're going to get kind of a theory about how you can create content and you can either create this from scratch, you can plan it out and execute it step by step, or if you've been doing a 90 day challenge, you can often look back at your past content and simply reorganize it, rearrange it in a way that kind of executes this structure as well. So the first big idea is we need to focus in what's our main keyword phrase and then you got to create a really great piece of content on that phrase. So for this example, it's container gardening. Now I've covered in many different videos about how to create a great SEO friendly piece of content. You really want to make sure that you're up there with the kind of value that all of the other sites currently ranking in the top spots are giving you. So take your time, go search container gardening, look through all the top posts that are ranking. How many words do they have? How many sections do they have? What are they talking about? What are they missing? Go look at the books, look at the, on Amazon, go find the container gardening books, look through their tables of content. What are those core pieces of information that are required? Because Google is continuing to try to get better and better at only ranking valuable content. So if you want this to work long term, make sure it's really high quality, really valuable content. So once you have your container gardening post, then it's time to look at all of the sub posts that are going to support that. And there's a very specific way you want to kind of manage your linking. And I'm going to show you how to do that and explain why that is so important. But the first thing you want to think of are what are the sub ideas below container gardening that you could create potentially dozens of different posts on. And I've got a few basic examples. I wouldn't stop with three. I'm just trying to give you a clear, concise, quick understanding of how this works. So the first idea would be the top 10 blank to grow in containers. Now I wrote the top 10 fruits to grow in containers, but you could obviously do, obviously do the top 10 herbs to grow in containers. Then you could do a post about the top 10 vegetables. You could possibly do the top 10 root vegetables. So there's a lot of variation off of this little basic idea. I'm only going to write up one. You could obviously do many of them in this situation. How many do you need? Well, you keep going until you essentially lift yourself up as high as you choose to be in the search engine rankings. That is the approach with a silo. You can always build more kind of, um, beneficial or helpful content to lift your main phrase up. So from there, the next one is how to grow blank in containers, right? So it's the top 10 fruits to grow in containers, but then there's the how to grow zucchini in containers, how to grow blackberries in containers. And again, this isn't supposed to be a one-off post that we're talking about. This is a framework that you could create dozens and dozens and dozens. It could be how to grow thyme in containers, how to grow basil in containers, how to grow apples in container. 
I don't know if that's possible. You would know what's going on here if this was your niche. The third type is uh, how to grow blank on a balcony, right? So if you think about who is the type of person who would use container gardening, people who live in apartments would be that kind of a person. And they might be searching for phrases such as how to grow fruits and vegetables on my apartment balcony. Now you want to make sure that each one of these is actually referencing a keyword phrase that gets some search volume. Because what might happen is this post might hit the number one spot immediately and this post could start bringing you in traffic while it helps you boost that post there. Now for the kind of purpose of demonstration, I'm going to draw a few extra boxes just to represent that we have more than three things because I don't want you to think the goal here is three sub posts for one. It might be 20 sub posts to really boost one thing up. So these are each representative of different posts that are subtopics of the container gardening idea. They could use these frameworks we talked about, or they could use different frameworks that you come up with over time through your keyword research. Now here's the real key part. How you structure your links is ultimately the make or break of this mechanism. Now we want to prove to Google that we have more content on our site lifting and pointing up to our short tail phrase than the other way around. So what we want to make sure happens is every one of these posts links up to our main keyword focused post. Then we need to make sure the search engine spiders are able to find all of these sub posts. So what you would do is you would have one phrase within your core piece of content link out to one of your sub posts in your silo structure. So you might have a point inside of your container gardening post, the key core post where you talk about the 10 top items you can grow in containers, you reference that post and you link it with an in-text link from your main keyword phrase post down to the lower substructure of supporting content inside of your silo. Then you need to make sure that all of your sub posts are interlinked with each other. Now, these little interlinking arrows are simply designed to make sure you realize that we want the search engine spiders, those little robots that read every post you ever write, when they find your main container gardening post, they're gonna come down and follow the link inside of that post and reach your substructure. This is the silo. You're introducing the search engine spiders to your lower structural content. Once they're here, you need to make sure the linking is done in a manner that they will work their way to every single post. Every time they go to a new post, they recrawl it, it drives them back up to your core content. Then they get to your next post, it drives them up back to your core content, and so on and so forth. This doesn't have to be chronological. This post could actually link to that one if it's relevant. This post could link to that one if it's more relevant. This is a very basic idea that I'm trying to convince here with a few core kind of drawn out items to make sure you get the key point, which I'm going to repeat one more time. You have a great piece of core content focused on a short, tail keyword phrase that has a high difficulty score and it really would open you up to a lot of great traffic. So you write an epic piece, then you have one link out from that piece of content to the substructure of the silo. It goes one time out, that way the search engine spiders will be able to go from indexing your core piece down to index your substructure. Then all of your substructure posts must interlink with each other. Now, this post does not have to interlink with every single post. You want it to, you want to let relevance guide you in this internal linking structure, but you have to make sure that each post has at least one inbound link and one outbound link. So when the search engine spiders reach your main content piece and then enter your substructure, they get into every single one of your sub posts, 
whether it's 10, 20, 30, 5, 40, it doesn't matter. Every time they reach a new post, they index it, they find that link that goes back to your current post. That is how you execute a proper SEO silo. On average, every two posts of yours is worth the equivalent of one backlink from a third party site of equal value. So all of your domain authority, all of your page authority that you build in these lower posts is able to flow back up to your main post, and that is how you increase your domain authority, your page authority, your page rank, whatever number, your citation flow, your trust flow, whatever metrics you're following, that is how you're able to move your kind of SEO value through your content and force it back up to one core keyword phrase post to really help that rank well in the search engines. And this, my friend, is a SEO silo structure. Doesn't matter if you plan this out and execute it methodically or if you're a little bit more like me and you're totally haphazard and you write all kinds of things and then someday you go back and analyze what did I do and you draw all the connections and you make it all work post kind of post creation um, looking back at what you did either way works what's best for you and your personality is really key to pay attention to I will do a future video where I show you how to run an audit of the content you've created how to identify the content that will fit well into silos and how to actually execute this structure but really from a big picture this is what you need to understand and this is how you can create content that ranks really well for these long tail phrases which will start bringing you traffic quickly, all while pushing up your short tail phrases to help you start to dominate for those big keyword phrases that can open you up to lots and lots and lots of traffic, and you can start outranking for some of those difficult phrases. It's a lot of fun when it works. It does take a lot of work, but ultimately, that's why I teach to do a 90-day challenge. You gotta do all these posts anyways, 90 days. This is, you know, one-tenth-ish of a 90 day challenge. You could do this nine times over throughout a 90 day challenge. You would be seeing lots of traffic coming into your site. The search engines will fall in love with you when you're meticulous about this kind of a linking structure because they'll be able to read your content. They'll be able to read the relevance. They'll be able to follow the links from one relevant post to the other, always getting linked back to the most important posts on your site that you want Google to rank really well. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up here. I do appreciate that. If you know someone who would get value from watching this, someone who's struggling with their rankings, feel free to grab the URL, share it with them, email it to them, embed it, put it in a group, do whatever you do. I, I appreciate the engagements. Any questions about this, get at me in the comments. I'm happy to connect with you in the comments. And ultimately, be sure you subscribe. I got another video coming out in a couple of days. And also, when I finish the audit that I'm currently doing, I'm, I'm neck deep in spreadsheets right now doing an audit to, to show how to physically do this uh, next level from this theory down into actual practice. Uh, just be sure to subscribe so you get notified when that video comes out because it'll be out hopefully within about a week. All right, on that note, I'm gonna cut it. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to connecting with you on the next video. And until then, be well, my friend.